Welcome back. My name is Artur Ceroński, and today I'm going to continue the teaching series on the elementary principles of Christ. This is part two, this series, and the series is based on the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 1. And today I would like to talk about the faith in God. The second part, faith in God. Something that is functioning in some sense in our society as a slogan, but what's it, uh, what does it look like in reference to what is written in the scripture? If we study the original, we read there that this is actually that the faith in God is actually a trust in God. So the phrase uh, faith in God means to have trust in God. So that's not just believing that there is a God, because many people identify their faith in God with the intellectual information that God exists. They say, I know there is a God, so I believe in God. But that's not equivalent, that's not like that at all. Because just to know that God exists doesn't necessarily equal believing in Him. There is a Greek word pistis used here for, uh, for the word believe. This word contains not only the information that there is a God, but also the potential of trust. So, believe in God. Belief in God is not only the information about the existence of God, but it is a matter of trust towards a person. Um, this is important. So, what does it mean actually to trust, my friends? What does it mean? To trust means to be convinced about the possibility to rely on someone. That's the first part of this uh, issue, and it concerns um, having trust in someone. So to trust means to be convinced about the possibility to rely on someone. To trust also means to believe that something will happen, to count on it happening. I would like the two sentences to accompany us during our study of the ver these verses. So, faith in God is the personal trust in Him. The trust the person of God. This is much more than information about His existence. This is also something more than only accepting by faith that God is and therefore giving Him your life. There's, uh, this is something more than that. So these teachings are meant for people who already know God because they can be helpful for you. Not only uh, they can be helpful if you know God already, only if you already gave your life to him. Um, so how did it happen? You believed you believed in God. You believed that God is, and since you believed that Jesus died for you, and you believed that he resurrected, and you received him by faith as your Lord and Savior, you have started this awesome process of developing your trust in this God that you believed in. So this verse talks about this exactly. This is a foundation of having faith in God in the sense of trusting Him with your life. So now we will, we will talk about this narrowing, the subject to the issue of trust. I would like us to find the book of Colossians, second chapter, verses 8 to 9. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and the vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the elements of the world and not after Christ. 
for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Repeat together after me. In Christ dwells all the fullness of Godhead bodily. And now listen to what you just said. In Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What does it mean for us? What is this trust in God? What is trusting God? It actually is trust in Jesus Christ. You know, when we talk about God, we, we generally move on a very wide area when we talk with people. So, for example, Muslims talk about God. They say that they believe in God. Buddhists, they believe in God, even in many gods. Many people say that they believe in God. They claim they believe in God, but Christianity is, is not some enigmatic claim that says, oh, I believe in God in general. Yes, Christianity is actually finding the way to this God. We can speak we can speak a lot about God. People speak a lot about God, about different gods, but the truth is that the access to God is only possible through Jesus Christ. So the knowledge of Jesus is equal to the knowledge of God. It is impossible to know God without knowing Jesus. Without Jesus, there is no access to God. Although he exists and loves all people, you can approach him only through Jesus. For over 2,000 years, this way called Jesus Christ is 100% known, revealed to men. Um, I don't have the space right now to repeat what already was said uh, the, previously, but we are talking about what we have today. So we have the way whose name is Jesus. It is known to us. He is the way. Now, the knowledge of God is connected with the knowledge of Jesus. And what follows from it is faith in God equals faith in Jesus. So trusting God and developing this trust in God means growing in your trust in Jesus. So the person of God is revealed to us in Jesus Christ in 100%. Listen, the only God, God Almighty, God who is omniscient, omnipresent, the only God, there is no other God, this God has been revealed to people in Jesus Christ and only in Him. This verse tells us clearly that it, in Jesus Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So God has been revealed to us in Jesus Christ and to trust God means to trust Jesus. I hope we have it clear. Therefore, the extent to which you trust Jesus is the extent to which you trust God. Listen, what does it mean to trust Jesus? To trust Jesus means to be convinced that you can rely on Him in every area of your life and therefore to expect success in each of these areas. Do you understand what, the trust, what it is to trust Jesus? To trust Him means to be convinced, being convinced, you don't, you don't need to convince a person who is already convinced to something. If you need to convince someone about something, it means that this person is not convinced. And conviction is certainty. In some one place in the Bible, it is written uh, that the faith is confidence. In Hebrews 11.1, 1. so 
the trust in Jesus is being convinced that you can rely on Jesus in every area of your life concerning your spirit, your psyche, your body, also the material issues in a practical way. So because of this confidence that we can rely on him, we are convinced that we will have success in each of these areas. In another place in the Bible, it is written that someone who comes to God has to believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. So the life of trust in Jesus is a life with a conviction that in Jesus Christ, every area of your life has its solution and stimulation that leads to success. It means in practice that we raise every area of our life to an optimally high level, or rather to the maximum level that cannot be taken higher. Now, I would like us to see on what we should build our trust in Jesus. And this is um, crucially important. On what should we rely? Um, well, I want you to understand one thing. I will never tell you things which are only theory. I will now tell you which tools you need to use to be able to build your trust in Jesus. First of all, we rely on our knowledge. You have to pursue it. You have to pursue this knowledge. So first, um, the basic source of knowledge about Jesus should be the New Testament. That's the first source we have. Uh, and that's the external source. Uh, however, the, the first internal source is your reborn spirit, uh, in which the Holy Spirit lives. So, uh, when you combine the external and the internal source, it means uh, that means you live a life of prayer and worship, you talk to God, you lift Him up to the highest place in your life, then the internal source starts to, so to speak, pump the information about Jesus into your psyche. Uh, then the external source starts to be uh, legible and clear for you. So uh, the Bible, the New Testament starts to be clear, easy to understand. Uh, so one of the functions of the Holy Spirit who lives in every newborn person is to remind us everything Jesus said and to worship Jesus in us. If you come to Jesus and you are a newborn person, then the Holy Spirit is constantly reminding you in your spirit everything Jesus said and he is worshiping and praising Jesus in you. So there is this reaction that happens internally, reaction of exaltation, of worship, of respect towards God. And this is the source that has a very strong effect. And the external source, the second, um, the external source, which also um, is very strong and starts to be legible for us, if we continue to abide in God's presence is the New Testament. The whole Bible is inspired by God, but the New Testament is for you the most clear and, and the fastest beating source, so to speak. So you rely on the knowledge from these two sources. Now, knowledge about what? First of all, this knowledge shows you who Jesus is. You need to know who Jesus is. I would like to encourage you to find out who he is. I know who Jesus is. I will tell you what I know, what I learned, and which factors stimulated my trust in him. So, first of all, I learned that he is God. Jesus is equal to God. He's equal to the Father. 
God revealed himself in three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is equal to the Father and the Holy Spirit. He is God. I also learned that he is my Savior. He has rescued me. To save means to rescue. So he rescued me from the eternal death, from condemnation, from all kinds of pathologies. He is my Savior, rescuer my personal rescuer. Who else is Jesus for me? Well, I have learned that he is my friend. He cares for me. He wants to be with me. He wants to spend time with me, to live with me every day. Moreover, he is my healer, my doctor. He is the healer of my body, of any sorts of physical conditions, and the healer of any mental deviations. He is the healer of my soul. I also learned that he is the one who sets me free, my deliverer. Because of what he did for me, I have the authority over every demonic power. I can be free from every kind of bondage. So I have learned many things about who Jesus is for me. That's the first point. You have to know who he is. The first point on which you will base your trust in Jesus. And secondly, you have to find out how Jesus lived on this earth. This you can learn from the Gospels and later from the teachings of the Apostles. You have to get to know the opinions, concepts of Jesus concerning different issues. You have to learn what he was teaching, how he behaved. You have to learn all of this because the way Jesus acted is the way that God acts. The opinions Jesus had are the opinions of God. Do you understand? So the convictions of Jesus are convictions of God because God is Jesus and Jesus is God. And thirdly, you have to learn what Jesus did for you during his life on the earth. You have to find out what he did for you. You have to take a look at different scriptures and you have to listen to your reborn spirit as you do. You need to combine these two things. Always combine these things together. Remember, my friend, to be properly guided by the Holy Spirit, you need to combine the internal voice of your reborn spirit with the external voice of the Holy Spirit, which is the written word. You have to combine it. These are the two witnesses. As the scripture says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established, your inner man and the written new covenant. You need to learn from these two sources what Jesus did for you while he walked on this earth. On this foundation, you will build your confidence in him. Fourthly, you have to find out what the death of Jesus, his resurrection and his ascension brought into your life. This is the fourth part of the foundation on which you will build your trust in Jesus. And number five, you also need to discover what Jesus is doing for you now in heaven and as the Holy Spirit in you what he's doing in heaven and what is he doing as the Holy Spirit in you. Please learn these things, discover these things. Finally, number six. Number six is you need to find out what Jesus will do when he returns. First of all, you need to learn that Jesus will come back. And that he will, and he need to know what he will do at that time. I'm not going to give you the answers to these questions uh, because I don't want you just to get them from me. I showed you in point number one who Jesus is for me. Um, I could do the same with every other point, but I want you to find the answers for yourself because it is written the one who seeks finds and the one and to the one who knocks the door will be opened 
you are responsible for building your life with God. When you gave your life to Him, you took the responsibility of cooperating with Him. That's why Apostle Paul says that we are God's co-workers. People think that, that God's co-worker is someone who is active, for example, in the area of evangelism or something else. But the truth is that God, God's co-worker is someone who is constantly cooperating with God in every aspect of his life. Uh, this is very important. So, I would like you to seek and cooperate with God. I would like you to hear these things one more time. So, let's uh, go over them once more. That's number one. You need to learn who Jesus is. Number two, how Jesus lived on this earth, his opinions, his concepts, teaching his behaviors. Number three, what Jesus did for you while he was on this earth. Number four, what the death of Jesus, his resurrection and his ascension brought into your life. And number five, what Jesus is doing for you now in heaven and as the Holy Spirit in you. Number six, what Jesus will do when he returns. When you study these six aspects in your heart, which means your heart means the depth of man. That's, um, that's the Greek word cardio, a place that's a place where you can experience the connection between the spirit and the soul. So that's the depth of man, um, which is in a sense intangible. So in your heart, in the, in the deep part of you, trust will start to grow as you study these six aspects. All this knowledge, uh, all this knowledge you acquire and you ponder will build up this trust. So tr you will start being um, convinced in your depth inside of you. For example, for example, you will see, as you read, as you contemplate, you will find out that Jesus multiplied the bread and fish. So, aha, that means he multiplies food. So, he can multiply something in my life. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can have success in my life. Some multi multiplication can take place in my life. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you that you are a God of multiplication. Do you understand what I'm talking about? This is this thing that when you start to ponder these things, it will result in the increase of trust. You will trust. You will just simply trust. And now, how to cultivate your faith, your trust in God? And number one, and I will keep repeating it over and over again, prayer life. It means a life that is focused on the internal experiencing of God. That is the prayer life. Uh, the word to pray is prosehomai. That's the Greek word meaning being directed at. It means that inside of me I am directed as at someone or something. This is prayer. Do you know that if inside of you you are directed at something stupid, some silly thing, you are praying to this thing? This is praying exactly. Prosekomai. To be directed as someone or something. For example, someone calls me and says that he's constantly thinking about his girlfriend. I tell him, you are praying to her. He says, no, I, I only pray to God. And I say, no, no, you are praying to her. The prayer life is being directed at. 
there is nothing written here about at whom or at what. That's why to pray to God means to be directed at God. So the development of your prayer life. So please listen to my teaching concerning prayer, worship and so on. You can find them on YouTube. These are very important things because we cultivate a faith, a trust in God and in Jesus by our prayer life. Number two, by confessing God's truths with our mouth. So we speak God's truths. Which truths do we confess them? God's truths, not truths of this world, not some religious truths, not pro-social truths. We speak God's truths. It doesn't mean that you are not allowed to talk about things that surround you. It means that you shouldn't proclaim these things. And what is proclaiming? Proclaiming is acknowledging with your mouth that something is the dominant thing, that the truth is a dominant thing. For example, someone is watching TV and the journalist is saying that there is a big influenza attack in our country right now. And this man is watching it and after that he starts to walk around talking rubbish with his tongue, repeating this information. The flu is on the rise, we need to protect ourselves and get vaccinated. What is he doing? He is proclaiming some information he has just heard. I don't even deny that there is influenza in our country. But what I don't accept is giving that influenza prominent place by such a proclamation. How can you say that influenza reigns, for example? In Polish, we say that an illness can reign if it's on the rise. But do you know who can reign? A Lord can reign. I have accepted Jesus as my Lord, so who reigns in my life? Jesus reigns. The influenza can exist somewhere, but Jesus reigns. If I am in Jesus, then the influenza, the flu, does not affect me. Whom does it affect? Those who, over whom it reigns. I'm just giving you a simple example, but... Uh, we build a trust in Jesus by confessing God's truths with our lips. Number three, by steps of faith, which means practicing the acquired knowledge. Whatever we receive from the inner source and from the external source, right, we should put into practice in our life. The trust has to be practiced. It requires it. You cannot say that you trust God if you don't do what this God told you. This is nonsense. Um, the Apostle James calls such people unstable in all their ways. They say one thing and they do something else. No, you need to practice God's truths in your life. Sometimes people say, but I need to feel something. I answer that in the spirit, there are no feelings. If there is a truth, then this truth simply is. Do you understand? The truth is. It simply is. It's not about feeling or seeing it. It just is. You have to acknowledge it. If someone says... I believe in this truth, then okay, then do this, do this, do what it says. This is very important. Don't say that you cannot do it, you're not able to do it, because if God said something, it means he enabled you to do it even before he said it. Do you understand? God would never tell you to do something that would be impossible for you to do. If God's saying something to you, then certainly he enabled you to do it. When did he enable you? When you were born again of the Holy Spirit. Who started to live in you? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. He entered your spirit and you became able just like Jesus is. Repeat after me. I am able just like Jesus. I am able just like Jesus. Yeah? So how do we cultivate a trust in Jesus? By means of our prayer life, by confessing God's truth with our mouth, and by taking steps of faith 
that is practicing the acquired knowledge. These are very important things because we are talking about the elementary principles of Christ. We are establishing now the foundations of Christian doctrine, the foundations. Now, that's the second of six principles, faith in God, that is trust in God. To trust God means to trust Jesus. I told you today how we get to know Jesus. We met him as our personal savior when we were born again of his Holy Spirit. And from this moment, we are in the process of getting to know him. My friends, these are very, very important things. I would like you to listen systematically, not only to the fundamental truths I am teaching now, but on the internet, you can also find other teachings, the teachings also of Uh, of my wife, of our friends from the apostolic team. And I would like to encourage you to listen to all the teachings that we publish, that we promote, ours of the people uh, we recommend to you. Dear friends, I would like us to pray together now. Father, I want to thank you for all those people who received your word today. Let your word work in them. Let your spirit confirm your truths to them so that they can be really established and strengthened in them. Let your angels protect them and may they lose nothing from this word. In Jesus' name, amen.